Hello everybody, welcome to the latest Worlds of ZZT livestream. Tonight we're going to be playing The Secret of Cannibal Island. It is an older Alexis Jansen game, it was one of ZZT's most well-known authors, I'd say. She was responsible for quite a lot of innovations. The biggest being the whole super toolkit thing, which let you get more colors out of ZZT. Decided to pick this one for secret reasons, which will be revealed later. But for now, let's just listen to this title screen music, which eventually turns into the theme song from the original Monkey Island. It is definitely Monkey Island, and there's some more music that I think, and a bit of structure. It's it's definitely got a Monkey Island influence to it, but it's very much not a Monkey Island game. Anyway, before we actually hit play here, I do want to point out on this title screen that it's got a couple of uses of special colors with some these weird ZZT tricks that they don't want you to know about. Namely that the water is just done by having blue text and pressing the space bar, which is an easy way to get dark colored solid looking walls. And also the trees on the island there, their, their trunks have a gray background which is done by just putting an object on top of water, which for some reason ZZT lets you do. I don't know. It's a mystery. And that's about as far as the Monkey Island stuff goes. No, the, everything is in one part, it's just split into chapters in a weird way. Sea Isle. So part one, proof of worth. And we start off on this little island hub. There's no ammo here, there's a lot of gems. We got a village, some information. Can we talk to the trees? That's a staple of old CZT games. Let's see. No, that's just a regular old tree. I can grab these gems before we do anything. Oh yeah, also, some of them have signs. So we got a fortress to the west. Ice caves to the north. Temple of the Ancients to the north. Pyramid to the east. Lava Swamp to the south. So you got all your adventure game staples here. You got this incredible information room which was extremely inspiring to me as a kid. You get all sorts of cool stuff that we're going to see throughout this game. 
get food to restore some health. And to this day, I see that function sign, and I always think, oh yeah, that's that's the food character. The magic heart, which restores more health. And the potions, make a note of this, it's very important. Blue heals, red's poison, yellow attacks the enemies, and purple, of course, turns worms into gems. So, no red. Don't drink red potions. Bags of gold, large ammo. Let me get some of the fun stuff. We get lava. Blooming lava blocks your path like water, although you cannot shoot over it. So that just means it's a wall. Splitters, which will split bullets into perpendicular directions. Usually seen with rerouters and spinning guns. Replicators, similar to duplicators, but it only copies when you or an enemy shoots it from any angle. Loose rocks? A tougher version of breakable walls. The only way to destroy them is for blockheads to run into them. And the toll boots? Yellow toll boots cost 10 gems to pass, and blue costs 50. A large part of this game is collecting gems to get through these toll booths. Unfortunately, most of the other cool sounding stuff is only really used on like one board apiece. Yeah, some new enemies like the blockhead, which will really hurt you, or destroy loose rocks, or be killed by a bomb. They're very complicated creatures. You get the super cool ice dragon. The ice dragon has something you might need. Special items, like statues, retrieve this for a reward. And trees. Most trees have signs nailed to them to help you decide where to go. It says right here, new enemies. Ice dragon. Ruby keys. These are special keys. You can hold many of them at once won't show up in your inventory, so that's always a plus. You don't have to worry about returning our purple keys like you would in town. Ruby doors, unsurprisingly, you need a ruby key. Gold key, it's a special key, there's only one in the entire game. Gold door, these can be opened with a gold key, but one key can open many doors. So you've got a bit of a key hierarchy here. This game is very inspired by the first best of ZZT game. It's extremely derivative of it, but it's also better in most ways. This game is far from perfect, but it's far more playable, and it's definitely a, a classic old ZZT adventure game. Alright, let's go to the Cannibal Village and meet the cannibals of Cannibal Isle. I am the village leader. Although we are cannibals, we never eat those who earn our respect. Many groups of monsters have flocked here and constructed dens. If you destroy these creatures, you may be worthy of our respect. And you might need this. Okay, so we get a quest here. So this game is still a key collecting game like Town and City, and those older titles. But it's, it's got more of a structure to it. You definitely have to start this way, because, I mean, we can't open these doors and we don't have any ammo or anything. Unfortunately, this board is probably, like, the worst in the game. The good news is I did play this some time ago for a Closer Look article, so I do remember I definitely want to get to the back corner pretty much as soon as possible. Purple potion. Gloop, gloop, gloop. Great. Worms are down gems. Yeah, it's got a lot of these sort of blind runs here. You just kind of got to hope. There's a poison potion, 
So we know not to drink that. Oh man, this is like a thousand times easier going this way. I say this before I get mauled by lions and a spinning gun here. Actually, I need some torches too. I can live with that. Health potion, always good. Alright, gotta make a leap of faith here and just hope I don't get shot. Ugh. I'm also shooting some of these gems, just because it's a bit easier than gambling. It's they're, they're magic potions. That's they do their thing. Yellow potion. This is the this is the big one. Now all the enemies are gone, including the spinning guns. If you don't know this, and you well, if you don't know that this potion is in the corner, you'll probably just get really destroyed by the guns as he kind of stumbled blindly. Look at this. Now this is a good cave and I have like a hundred ammo instead of like running out of ammo constantly. Oh look at that! We managed to freeze a bullet somehow. So yeah this area could definitely do with some kind of guiding arrows or something. No, oh, why did I just drink that? I'm dumb. Don't do that. Don't do what I just did. Look at all these resources. I've got 100 ammo. I've got more than 100 health. Normally you walk out of this cave and you're basically dead. I think in my last playthrough I had to like make several trips into this cave throughout the game just to pick up extra supplies and now it's like no you can just empty the whole thing out this is so much nicer all right i'm just gonna check if i missed anything nope got two more poison potions and a frozen bullet oh man i've never been this prepared for this game it's incredible Now these cannibals will be our friends. Oh, right. I'm not supposed to destroy the monsters in the caves. I'm supposed to destroy these monsters. So I do like these little pockets of creatures, and this I'm pretty sure you do the exact same thing at the start of Best of ZZT. Normally it's like really scary because you barely have any ammo. I get to kite the bears. Alright, so we're gonna start unlocking areas pretty soon, so feel free to make some suggestions. I know we've got an ice cave, uh, the pyramid. I know we can't go in the fortress. The uh, Temple of the Ancients was another one. There was this one. Lava Swamp. So, if you got any preferences, I'm here in Ice Cave.
Oh, here's a... We can observe how bears destroy breakable walls. Get to kite one last bear. And lastly, the centipedes. Oh, that would have been... Would have been nice if I got them all. There we go. All monsters destroyed. I see you have destroyed all the monsters. You have earned our respect. For now, you may enter the village. Alright. So we're making some early progress here. The priest, the evil ice dragon has stolen our statue of the god Hamus Hamus. Please retrieve it for me. So, sorry, this ice dragon is kind of a jerk. We can get descriptions and secret items if we explore the skeletons, like diamond rings. Oop, I missed that one, but there was some other bonus. Lots of jewels, jewels, coins, the works. Anyways, here's the friendly cannibals. Who will take a chomp out of you. So, they're not that friendly, really. So yeah, we also get all these like toll booths here, and if you actually like stop and look, you'll realize a couple things. Firstly, everything is really expensive here, even if it doesn't look it. You gotta spend 20 gems to get one gem, and you're not getting a lot out of things. Oh wow, so they are. Health and gems in perfect alignment. Meanwhile, if you look over at the WoW room, you'll kind of noticed that it's got one of the ruby keys that you need to beat the game, so... That's going to be our big quest. But I mean, look at that. We already got through a pretty decent chunk. 100, 200, 300. There's only like 350 to go. That's not bad. I think if you do go in this area first, you're probably going to run run out I'm afraid to try it honestly I know the last time I played this game I realized to go for the ruby key and I know I wasn't able to open up both of them in their entirety we'll see how far we can get I'll try and not shoot any gems okay so I guess we we decided we're going ice cave Oh, there we go. That's an ice cave and a temple of the ancients. And look at that, more free gems once we decide to go that way. I guess we're getting all the dark rooms out of the way, too. Oh, wait, I lied. Actually, you know what? This game isn't perfect. Because you can definitely soft lock it. I cave. If I remember right, pushing this down is a bad idea. This is definitely of an older design where this kind of like, all of these are guesses. I have no idea if pushing this to the right is going to screw me over. I have no idea if pushing that down is going to screw me over. I have a hunch pushing this one left will, since I can at least see that hits a dead end immediately. But I don't know. I, I'm going to try right here. 
Like, I don't know what, if this is good or bad. That's good. Gotta do this legit, but... If, if you are making a Dark Ford, please, please consider what the player can actually see with torches. Is there a board to the right here? I don't know. Am, am I doing something bad by doing that? Maybe. There's a whole bunch of keys I need to get. I'm pretty sure there's not, if I remember right. But we need to start finding some of these keys. Like, this is good. We're like, hey, if you're not paying attention, you can... Well, okay, maybe soft locks aren't good, but it's on the player there, at least. Still nothing. Okay. So we did get a key. Red key, red key. What color door was this? This was yellow, I think? No. Red key for yellow key. Yellow key... Don't know if I trust that. I think there's was there one at like the bottom here? Oh, that's cyan. Yeah, the doors look really similar too. That's on Tim Sweeney. He's the one who decided to make them all white with a dark colored background. The good news is that these days you can make doors that have like bright yellow foregrounds when they're yellow doors, which is something I would urge anybody to do if they're using keys and doors, because it's a pain. Alright, I think I have to just make another guess here. Let's... sure, this way. Okay, that looks good. can't drop obscure Ice Cap Zone trivia when we played the Sonic ZZT game a few weeks ago. Alright, I'm just kind of going for it now. Also got a... You know what? I think we've been here long enough. Let's see. Yes, so this was a mistake. And... We did pretty good. Let's try Ice Cave 2. This one broken. Looks good. I think we're good here. Anyway, this is what happens if you don't design your game well. People have to cheat, or load 100 saves, and it's not fun. Yeah, if you run out of torches, there's no way to get more. There's no shops. I mean, you can spend stuff on, like, the, the toll booths, but even that's, uh... Didn't want to hit that. Don't think I can fix that. Gonna fix this the cheap way. Almost did it again. Yeah, that would have worked, because I wouldn't have had those horizontal sliders in the way. So it was like, 
there's some good ideas. Like this sort of multiple solution in this one spot, but I think that's more of a coincidence than like a well thought out concept. Uh, yellow key or yellow doors in the bottom left. Like, yeah, this is definitely a board that you're better off cheating. Ugh, I didn't push that down, so I gotta go the long way back. And yeah, we'd be burning up torches doing this. I swear, it's gonna get a little nicer. We just happened to pick, like, the starting dark cave, followed by the other dark cave. Uh, streaming code red is definitely something I want to do. It's... It would be a bit of a commitment. I've never actually finished it. And I mean, it's got eight endings, and there's, like, no way we're not gonna see all eight. You, you gotta do that. That's the whole thing. So, one of these days, we're just gonna have, like, code red month or two, and go through that. I have a feeling that it's not that long of a game. And our reward for the ice cave is more ice cave. Don't let yourself be shut out. Moving blue walls move upon contact. So while the last board was just basic ZZT elements, now we're making new puzzles out of objects. I have 300 health, and I cannot believe that in this game. Now I know I criticized the last board for buying let blind guessing, but uh, this is like incredibly obviously some sort of trap with bears. So probably the heart. Yeah, don't don't do that, because you you lose. So we need to... Well, I guess it's not really a puzzle so much as it is making sure we move quickly. Okay, so now we do get a split path. Hopefully that was the right direction. There's something here. It's a little fancier looking. 
I didn't mean to set that wall off. Don't think that actually breaks anything, because I know there's the ice dragon right there, but just in case. Alright, get ready for a boss fight in a small space. Ice Dragon has been defeated. Statues recovered, and we are done with those caves. Get out of here. Yes, it's it's right there. This guy. So you can pop open some more of these toll booths. Fifty two hundred gems to go. So this opens up another new path. Do we want to go this way, or do we want to go to the Temple of the Ancients, the Pyramid, the Lava Swamp, I think that's everything. Or we can look at the fortress, but we can't actually go into the fortress. Couldn't hurt to look. Oh, look at that. Part 2, The Four Ruby Keys. So that's a, it's a really fun technique here. You can see the passage changing color. and how this top passage was blocked off of the two. So we can go back and forth without going through that part two screen. It's a nice little touch. Anyway, we can talk to this guy and then we'll decide if we want to continue clockwise or keep going this way. I know you wish to escape from this island. The other cannibals only wish you for dinner. There is one way off. Hidden beneath the earth there is a secret ship. The entrance is deep within a fortress. To reach the ship, though, you will need four ruby keys. The village kept one and hid the others in different places on the island. To go deeper into the forest, you will require this key. It will open any and all blue forest doors. Good luck. Oh, so, uh, actually, good call. I forgot that all those other doors here on this board are locked until we talk to this guy. So we need to go here, but we didn't need to go to the endless forest yet, at least. Did I just... Oh, okay. Well, thank you for the five ammo? It's not nearly enough. Alright, let's do the Temple of the Ancients. As long as we're heading up to this northern path. Also, we can pick up yet more gems. I completely forgot that the gates were locked. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been asking people until now. Okay. Temple of the Ancients. This is a vi busy looking board. And it also has a bunch of the new mechanics that are in the information room. You can see there's the green splitters on the in the left area. 
the blockheads and the loose rocks in the lower corner, the replicators. There's a lot going on. I don't know why there's breakable walls there. So here's the thing with these guys. They're supposed to be used to destroy these loose rocks, but it's a little bit beyond ZZT to actually do something like that. These objects can only check if they're blocked in a direction or if there's a player next to them. So they're smart enough that when I walk next to them, they kind of push me out of the way like this. But if you shoot a bullet, then they hit this point where they're blocked to the left. So they just die like breakable walls anyway. Kind of a downer. But probably for the best, because as you can see, those things are not exactly smart about how they move. I like that idea. Let's just do that. Now we can get that wonderful bullet sound. Oh, you can also do that. Because here they can't push us away. <laughs> this poor, these poor, poor game mechanics. Alexis was trying. Okay. So I want to run over here first, so I don't get hit with that last column. What? Oh, right, that one there. So this is another case where there is, like, supposed to be a puzzle of sorts. But you just shoot a bunch. I guess it gets a little more involved here, since you gotta find a way to pick up all these keys. Okay, my plan was to take one step and immediately turn around, and instead I went up several times, so... It is a bit pricey ammo-wise, but I think we'll manage. Okay, that time I didn't get hit. And I can just run down here and not have to worry about the bullets reaching me in time. So it's a neat idea. This game has a lot of ideas, at least, I will say that. Alright. Now for this part.
That was terrifying. I unfortunately missed the path to actually touch one of those scrolls. They have a really good message. Look that one up super quick. What do the scrolls read? Oh, that's right. They just say, oh no, in all caps with three exclamation points. It's really good. So yeah, the Temple of the Ancients was a bit painful, but we're on the way out. Look, there we go. Ruby key. More gems. What more could you ask for? go. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's another thing. I definitely thought that was like a ruby door the first time I played through this. Oh, let's do our, get our tolls paid. I'm getting really close now. Okay, so the pyramid. Let's see. Now I guess my save can be back to this. So the pyramid is a pyramid. 100 gems to go, and sure enough, there are a lot of treasures in the pyramid. I love this little ascent. It takes a lot longer to get through the board this way, but it's it's worth it because it's just cool. Okay. So now we get some like legit slider puzzles where it's not blind guessing in the dark if I'm screwing myself over. So let's see here. I remember this being a pain. And what I need to do is ultimately get this one to move south. So I want this one to go right. Oh, okay. And then, yeah. Never mind. This... I apparently remember this game better than I thought. Now, technically, we don't know if we're trapped forever like this, but so far, but I mean, we can see that extra passage, and so far this game has been good about that, and I do remember that we are fine, but it is, it is nerve-wracking the first time when you get here, and you're like, wait, did I screw that up? Then we get this thing, which is a lot easier. I remember that much. Which means this time I'll screw this one up. So once you can just get inside, you're good to go, really. I think I screwed it up. Oh no, I did. <laughs> There's nothing left. Well, that absolutely figures. Let's try that again. Okay, well, that's how you do it. Puzzle solved. Slider puzzles are not easy to make because that happens a lot. Like, that felt 
too easy to be the intended solution. But it definitely worked. Then we get this one. So... Puzzle solved. I love it. It's it's so intimidating looking. And really it's just yeah. Just a fun little machinery there. And there's our next Ruby key. path out. I love the little jingle that plays every time you get one of those keys. It feels very triumphant. Alright, and we can make it to the WoW room. This is entirely pre-SDK. Everything that's special in this is generally just like text or putting something on water. I don't think there's anything else. This game is very derivative of the first Best of ZZT game. It's like to the point where people very frequently just confuse the two. I think in my first playthrough I was like almost out of ammo and almost out of health at this point. Oh, the tune. Oh, well. I mean it was it was there on the title screen. It's, it's that little motif, but I mean if the half of the title screen's theme is taken from Monkey Island, I wouldn't be surprised if the other music comes from something else also. But if it's from something, I don't know that. So, let's keep going clockwise. To the Endless Forest. So yeah, this is another popular thing before SDK. You're just using torches as a background for a forest like this. Even Town of ZZT does that. It's honestly a pretty good effects. Oh, I shot a gem. Trying not to at this point, even though in that starting cave I was much more willing to. So this is fun. We got a little object in the corner there that's just changing empty walls into back into forest. 
so we don't actually leave a path. Yeah, we also get a little high in gems. And it also means we get this weird centipede situation. Where that ends up happening. Sneak past some ruffians. Oh wow, that worked. And it goes back to normal. Which is almost jarring. Got some transporters here. This is a little secret. Oh, I didn't pay attention. Did that... Did I pick up two gems or one doing that? I'm not sure. I think going through the transporter crushes one of the gems instead of picking it up. But I don't feel like loading an old save just to find out. Nice. There we go. They're taking their time. There's still an object in the corner, so I'm guessing that this board was, like, going to have the infinite force mechanic, but that would break the transporters, because there'd be no destination tile. He can't transport on top of a forest, since it's an occupied tile. Oh, yes I did, there's another secret. Well, I forget if we have to backtrack for this one. I think we actually might, even though the game's been pretty good about not really doing that. And here's our gold key. I always love these sort of things. This is just orbit of centipedes. Oh boy, that one's after me. Okay. So you definitely want to keep the path snare up. Okay, yeah, we do need to backtrack this time. Which is we Which means we can pick up that other secret that I forgot about. We can bait the tigers out. So yeah, like I can't use this t this transporter here. Wow. 
Why did I go this way? That sucks. Okay, well we got our gold key now. Oh, look at this. You found the golden key, but have you found all four ruby keys yet? Not quite. And another, like, one of these breakable looking things. Look at that, he's running. Oh, we can start cracking open this toll booth. So you kind of gotta do the math for what you want. There's some food, some hearts, some big ammo, some small ammo. Torches don't really matter at this point, but... Oh, maybe we can open the whole thing. Unrelated, uh, I will be right back. All right, I return. Sorry about that. Moving on. Where are we going next? Uh, oh, right. See, I love th that that guy actually like runs across multiple boards like that. And it's all like hidden in plain sight. This used to be like an object here. All of this is just trickery, basically, to hide an, an object in plain sight. I didn't think anything about these weird normal walls that were here, or the the breakable walls over there, and they end up having purposes. And, but we're not chasing that guy. We are going to the lava swamp. He ran off to the fort, uh, not the forest, the fortress. 
I'm sure we'll see him again. First, we gotta check out this really cool lava room. So, normally when you touch water, you get a little message saying, hey, you're, you're blocked by water. And, you know, normally when you shoot bullets, bullets appear. But this board actually hits the object limit. So, we can't shoot because ZZT can't spawn a bullet. It makes the check after it takes the ammo, though, so we can waste all our ammo. And it also means you can't display a message, because even that requires a stat object. All for this cool lava effect. Oh, hang on, miss some all important gems. Can I shoot a gem like this actually? Well, I'll learn something. Yes. Passage is changing colors, and that is going to be important. It's difficult to see if you're not looking in that direction though, with all the other flashy lava. Which I think is also supposed to display like a, hey, you're blocked by lava message, but it can't. So let's see. Alright, so I rolled white, and get to the room of hot and cold. Yep, there's our lava message. So this is a really neat board. What the heck shot me? I'm blocked by lava. That's an object. How'd I get hit? I'm very confused by what happened there. That's, uh, somebody clipped that. What happened? Anyway, when we're not discovering more weird ZZT bugs, we get this really neat puzzle, not puzzle board, this really neat action board where we're going to be going through that entrance different, different times to move to the different spots. We'll spawn on a different passage depending on what color passage we entered from. We get to use lava as a sort of a shield. And we get to just make our way across, hopefully collecting keys as they're needed. Okay, so we don't want purple or white, because purple's just got a big old line of keys. Let's go yellow. Oh, it, it does match. I've never noticed that. That's good. So we can get that red key since we've got the white key. Let's take advantage of our water situation here. So red will get us that key. Well, not good. So my one complaint, well, other than getting wrecked at the passage like that, my other complaint about this board is that there is now one tiger left, and there are many, many keys and doors that we still gotta go get.
But I think we can at least agree that this is a neat idea. This game is full of neat ideas, once again, that just don't quite pull off what Alexis Jansen was going for. I'm just thankful that, like, touching lava doesn't hurt you. Because that would just make this actually go from neat to very bad. Another long walk here. It also bugs me that this board isn't centered, but that's kind of how it goes before people had external editors and could copy and paste tiles. I wasn't paying attention to what color I actually needed. Purple, right? Or six keys, yes. Purple, we need white. Okay, I think this should be the end of it. Last tiger out of the way. Helps to pick up the keys. Oh! Yeah, so that actually is a, a known bug that actually happens in Best of ZZT a lot. That was the one where we were standing on the passage and immediately stepped onto a tiger. And when you do that, passages become white, which isn't good. So we actually really lucked out because the way ZZT picks a passage is it looks for the color and it goes with the last one on the board. like. Not in the stat order, which pretty much everything else is in, but just going top left and scanning across to the bottom right. So we're lucky that the White Passage was down here. If the White Passage was up top, we'd always... We'd end up... Or, I'm sorry. Wait, I just got all confused. Long story short, though. We lucked out with our passage. So actually, what happens if we go in the red? Oh yeah, if we go in the red one, so we're here at green. We just wind up where we are, because ZZT doesn't see a matching red passage. So best of ZZT, that happens. There's a spot where it's really, really easy to have that happen on you, and it breaks the game entirely. So I guess that's a cool thing to show off. One of ZZT's many, many weird quirks. And that was the Lava Swamp. So now we've got our four ruby keys. We got to open our last toll booths. No, not enough to open all of them. We're really close, actually. 50, 70 gems total. I don't... I, th I think you get locked into the fortress once you go in, but if not, it might actually be possible to open the whole thing. And I'm sure I shot, like, 10 or so. 
I doubt I shot enough gems to open up that 50. Anyway, on to the fortress. And look, there's our friends, still running. And he opened up the golden door, which is kind of rude. So, if I remember right, this is the, that door is actually bugged. And if we go onto this board before we have the key, it'll actually break. Or something along those lines. It might be the doors on the next board. There's some bug which can be avoided by doing this. I think we should be good to just play the game. Or maybe I am just thinking of Ace Land. You have the four ruby keys. Yeah. Oh, that's what it is. It's if you talk to this guy without the four ruby keys, he breaks and he'll never open up even when you have the four ruby keys. So he's kind of a jerk. Anyway, on to part three. There is no part three. Part four, Escape from Cannibal Island. It's a really good, really good gag. Alright, the fortress. So now we do get some fiendish but fair puzzle design here. The order we pick up these keys is extremely important, and I didn't double check my old article to find out, so we're gonna be guessing again. Watch your nose. Okay, I think I, yeah, I wasn't supposed to pick up the red key, because now that's a solid wall. And we're going to run into problems with that later. Let's try again. Or no, I definitely was supposed to pick up the red key. Where was the red door? Oh, is that just... There we go. So even though we can't go that way, we have to pretend we're going to go that way. I think that we're good this time. This board just screams invisible walls. Well, this area of the board, I mean. Oh, right. Well, I guess... I hope that one doesn't matter. Definitely doesn't. That, and I was supposed to pick up the blue key also. We leave the white key behind. Dang it.
You can tell I paid no attention to how this maze was laid out. Because of this part right here is when the white key comes into play. If we picked up this white key, then we couldn't pick up this one. It would just be a solid wall. Oh, but I guess there's that door. Maybe I'm just mixing it up with the blue one. Either way, just be very cautious about what kind of keys you pick up here. So let's see. Let's just do that. So a white key... This way gets us some more white keys. There's our purple door. Okay, I think we're safe now. Other than this door with a bunch of tigers on the other side. I'm just going to tank the hit. Okay, that's purple. Let's pick up some more keys. Run past this little blink wall gauntlet. Back out. I do like that little shield until this part here where the shield breaks because now they're desynced. And I also have to hit this button anyway to move them out of the way. I don't think this will... yeah, one sends them up, the other sends them down, so you just gotta run for it at this point. Fortunately I've got a lot of health for once. There's just one key left, it's past here, through this really cool looking spiral, and out the door to the lion room. Which has some more invisible walls, but only in this corner, it's, it's a strange choice. There's another gold door. Nice little explodey check mark here. And a beautiful submarine. Congratulations! You have reached the hidden underground submarine of Cannibal Island. This is the end. So yeah, that that's it. Actually. Yeah, okay, we could go. 39 gems. Okay, that's still not enough to open everything in the toll booth. I did want to see how that goes. It's not super sudden. I mean, the game says that there's, like, a ship in the fortress. I guess the only thing abrupt is that it's this scroll specifically, but... That's Cannibal Island. It's fun. It's got some less than stellar design decisions. Design decisions. But it's definitely fun to play. Sometimes you kind of have to guess a little bit. Ice caves are not very good, and wow, does it actually make a tremendous difference if you get that potion hidden in the back of the cave at the start of the game that gets rid of the spinning guns.
I was way better off on health and ammo for like the entire game because of that. Instead of like every hit being like a horrible disaster. I'm actually kind of curious. I'm looking up the closer look article I did. So in that one where I just got wrecked a bunch, I finished with 154 health as opposed to 369. The points were pretty similar though, still in the 12,000s. But the, this is this is a new high score though. Anyway, that was Cannibal Island. Hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you found it inspirational. Because I want to talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing starting next week. What I would like to do for February is instead of playing some old ZZT games, I want us as a group, we got a whopping 12 people in here, I want people to start making games and I want to do that in a group setting. So I want us to start streaming, well I'm going to start streaming, and I'm going to be asking the viewers to make games along with me. I picked Cannibal Island today because I think it's a very simple ZZT game. If you've seen the other streams like For Elise and Small Spaces and all that stuff, you, you know how complicated they can get, but Cannibal Island, I think that's a pretty approachable level for somebody's first ZZT game. Honestly, that's it's going a little farther than I want. I want to do something really light, very limited amounts of code. Don't be intimidated by that. ZZT Oop is, it is simple enough that a child can get the hang of it. So I want this to serve as a sort of inspiration. I'd like to make just a small little game. We'll do a stream every week in February making something. So four weeks. We'll split it up into like a hub with branches like this and just to go through. I'll be here answering any questions. And I want to see what people can come up with, if that's something they'd be interested in doing. Obviously, the people in here who have been making ZZT games for 20 years are welcome to join us as well. But it would be extremely awesome if we can get some new faces to make a game, especially if you've never actually made a game before, ZZT or otherwise. It's a really fun thing to do. Um, so, next week is still January, and for that stream that's going to be our episode zero i guess and for that one i'm just gonna walk through the most basic of basics i'm going to start with downloading zeta and zzt and kevedit installing those on windows which i mean it's it's easy you run an installer or you like unzip a zip file and then we're going to play demo .zzt, just to make sure everybody's familiar with the basic building blocks. Then after that, for February, we'll start making some games together. Uh, I don't anticipate the streams to be really any longer than these ones. Hour and a half. We'll, we'll play it by ear and see how that goes. But our, it's going to be our February game jam, basically. So hopefully people are interested in that. Um, feel free to start thinking up like a theme. I want us to do... I don't want there to be like a set theme, not Cannibal Island 2. You can make it take place in space. You can make it take place on an island. You can do whatever. I just want like a simple hub world. Collect the, the three keys or the magic treasures, whatever that is, and just make a little game out of it. So I invite you all to join me there, and hopefully I'll see you next week to get yourself set up if you're unfamiliar with how to do that, and then after that to actually start making something I'm kind of excited for. I want us to do 2020, I want us to have 20 ZZT games at the end of the year. That's our, that's our target. We hit double digits last year. I think we hit double digits the year before, which was like the first time in many years. So... I think 20 sounds reasonable. I'd like to do more sort of events, and of course, when things are all done, I'd love to see what everybody makes and play it on stream as well. So yeah, um, look forward to that.
and I've been on this title screen for like five minutes now. Here's the outro screen that you're, you've all been waiting for. So thank you all for watching, and we'll be back next week, and the week after that, and the week after that, and hopefully we'll make something cool together. See ya!